Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, and advice. And um, I was reading recently a passage in Leviticus where it says that Aaron, the priest Aaron, high priest Aaron, shall arrange it, talking about the menorah, the, the lantern, the, for a, lack of a better word, a candelabra, a bit of a misnomer, a misnomer, it's not candles, it's oil. He shall arrange it, the lamps, from evening to morning. This is in, in Leviticus chapter 24, verse 3. However, in, we have a, what see, a seeming contradiction because in the book of Exodus, in uh, Parshas Tetzave, it says that Aaron's sons are to arrange the lamps on the menorah, the lantern, candelabra. Those of you who uh, have watched these videos before know that I am intrigued and attracted to seeming contradictions, unusual wordings. So I see this passage in Vikra and Leviticus. I think back to a similar passage in Exodus, in Shemot. What's going on here? Is it Aaron or his sons? Both. What's, what's happening? I'm not the first one to ask this question. The Balaturim um, addresses this issue. And he says that after the death of Aaron's sons, Nadav, Nadav and Avil, the ones who were killed for bringing a strange fire, Eshzara, Ever since then, Aaron did not allow his remaining uh, two sons to go into the sanctuary to do their duties alone. Um, he supervised them. He watched over them. He took care of them. Um, why? Why did he? Why did he do this? And what lesson can we learn? It was uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein who said that we can learn from this that a parent should always supervise his children. And the remaining sons weren't young people; they were adults. They were they were righteous people. They were holy people. And um, yet, as a parent. Aaron, the Kohen Gadol, felt a duty to watch over um, his sons. And um, Elazar and Isamar, these are the two, the two remaining sons, he kept an eye on them. We should follow this example. We need to keep an eye on on our children, people of my generation, ages past, uh, sometimes brag about how when we were little kids, we were sent out in the, in the, in the day and on a, on a weekend, we went around all day, the parents didn't know where we were, we, we couldn't doing anything, the parents, we didn't know until we showed up for supper. Nowadays, when people are more aware of the dangers around us, um, parents look after their kids a little more than they did in times past. Uh, and even in holy, righteous circumstances, uh, a young person goes off uh, to the synagogue or the study hall. How do we know he gets there? How do, he do, how do we know he gets there safe and sound? And even once inside, synagogues and, and, and study halls, they're open to all people. The people who are in there may not come from very good backgrounds. May, they may come from from different uh, lifestyles, they may harbor all sorts of thoughts that, you know, we don't want our children exposed to. We have an overriding responsibility to be cognizant of everything that involve, involves our children. We have to teach them diligently, and that doesn't just mean, you know, giving them a lesson or two and then, you know, shoving them out for the rest of the way. The love we demonstrate for our children should motivate us, 
motivate us to triumph not only the dangers of society, but to triumph over our own shortcomings. I'm too tired to do this. I don't have time to do that. Say, we'll do your homework later. Overcome it. Give your children the attention they deserve. If they need you to stay with them a little while, help them with their homework, help them understand a lesson, do it. Spend time. Devote it to your children. They're your children. Nothing is more precious. We have to educate them. The word educate from the Latin ex ducere. Out and to lead or guide. There's another Latin expression. Decendo discimus. We learn by teaching. Many times you've heard a teacher say, you know what, I've never learned so much as when I taught this. I remember a law professor, Alexandrovich, um, who told us he never really understood this a thorny legal um, concept, the rule against perpetuities. He never really understood it unless, until he taught it for about five or six years. Then he learned by teaching. Let me suggest uh, another thing. The learning we do, we learn this in order to teach, to teach our children diligently as we are commanded to uh, by the Creator. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Mona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.